What is up guys? Sad Cacus here. Thank you so much for stopping by and yesterday I made a video detailing a super powerful and really underrated role for the old-fashioned hand cannon and I said that I'd been spending all my fractaline, in that case over 350,000 fractaline, leveling up obelisks to try to get the world drop legendaries and I did get one half of my checklist done with that weapon but I I also mentioned in the video that I was still chasing the God Roll Last Hope sidearm. And many other people were doing the same. You still see this weapon posted very regularly as a, an unbelievably powerful chase weapon. Well, since I made that video, I'm out of Fractaline. I'm done. I've donated everything I have, all the resources I'm willing to spend, and the total is actually astonishing. We'll go over that later. And I finally got nothing. I didn't get it. My streamer loot is not enabled for some reason. I'm gonna have to start DM and Deej about that. I'm just, but seriously, I did not get the role I'm looking for. I did get some decent Last Hope rolls, kind of not quite the God roll, but halfway in between that we'll be showing off and talking about just how powerful this weapon is, even when you have a mediocre roll, and why it's so prominent, why so many people are chasing this weapon. So let's get started. And let's take a look at the final tally. What what were my resonance ranks for all my different obelisks when it's all said and done? The Imperium Foundation is a couple days away from ending. So, EDZ obelisk, that was the one that was glitched up. It's just level 11. That's the max rank for all of the practical rewards you get from an obelisk. So that's level 11. Then Mars, we've got level 404. Then we have the Tangled Shore at level 80, and lastly, the big boy that I just got lazy and started pouring all the resources into, Nessus, with a final tally of 2,979. And so, that is a total of 3,474 resonance ranks. We're gonna minus 44, aka 11 for each of them, because I wasn't chasing the last hope for those 11 ranks. I was just trying to get the rewards from the obelisk. And that equals 3,430 ranks where I'm just leveling it up to try to get the stupid last hope. And that is the equivalent of, I didn't use all Fractaline to level these up. Sometimes it was a light infused Fractaline, but I can't keep track of everything. So that is the equivalent of 686,000 Fractaline. All for nothing and that is a who that is a stark reminder of how serious rng is you've got to get one weapon out of a pretty large loot pool that's getting way bigger next season so it's going to be even harder to get screw me and then you've got to not only get the weapon you've got to get the perfect combination of perks well two really good perks now what actually is that god roll i'm looking for well it is firstly Feeding Frenzy, where you get a kill, reload increases, and in the other slot, it's going to be multi-kill clip, where every kill you get up to times three before you reload influences the damage bonus you're going to get after you reload. And it turns out that this is just an absolute wombo combo, phenomenal weapon in PvE. The best role I was able to walk away with in terms of a PvE role is going to be this role here and it has uh, firstly field prep instead of feeding frenzy and then multi-kill clip. Now field prep it's usually used to increase your reserves for stuff like uh, grenade launchers and so on that's where it's most desirable but it also has another part of this perk where if you're crouching it increases your reload speed actually quite a bit so it kind of functions as a jank like <laughs> bargain version of field feeding frenzy. Uh, you can make it work, you'll see me in the gameplay quite a bit crouching getting that super fast reload, but obviously just being able to benefit from getting kills which is your main darn goal in the game anyways and not having to crouch. Crouching can put you at some disadvantageous situations where you know, you're getting shot at by a lot of PvE enemies and you don't want to be crouching and limiting your movement speed. You want to be darting behind cover, reloading, and then coming out with multi-kill clip times two or times three, right? But what can you do? I'm making the best with what I have. However, in a stroke of good luck, when getting the gameplay for this video, I randomly did a forge and I finally got 
the Firefly Rampage like God roll curated roll for the Ringing Nail auto rifle that I've been going for since Season of the Forge. So over a year, every time, almost every time I'm doing forges, I'm putting in auto rifle frames and I finally got it today. So I think maybe the RNG gods smiled down upon my misfortune with the last hope. But let's talk about why is this weapon so good? Why are so many people chasing that Feeding Frenzy multi-kill club god roll? Well, the thing is, sidearms have been kind of a dark horse for a while, and that means it's a situation where they've been the recipient of a buff and then they weren't good enough, so they got another buff and they weren't good enough and they got another buff and then suddenly everyone's kind of like, oh wait, this has been buffed like three times and now it's really good. That's exactly what happened with The Last Hope. With Shadow Keep, Sidearms received a 16% buff against all PvE combatants, so they're just more deadly. And then with Season of Dawn, all sidearms had improved target acquisition across the board as well, so now they're easier to use. But it's also a symptom of not just sidearms improving as a whole, but also specifically The Last Hope having such a good perk roll. Multi-kill clip is arguably the best and most deadly perk for all of PvE, and the reason being is because it can reach the highest values of damage when you compare it to its counterparts like Rampage, Swashbuckler, Kill Clip, all of those things will reach a 30% damage increase. But multi-kill clip can go with multi-kill clip times three up to 50 or 60% of a damage increase, and that is just miles beyond, and it's really not that hard to get three kills before you reload, especially when you have like 27 rounds with this uh, archetype. And also once you get multi-kill clip rolling, it's super easy to chain it together. Three kills in a short time span with an insane 50% damage bonus is exactly as easy as you can imagine. And The Last Hope was really the first time that its archetype of adaptive three round burst sidearms was able to get the Feeding Frenzy and Multi-Kill Clip Wombo Combo. And like it actually can output when Multi-Kill Clip is going, it outputs significantly more damage than the Recluse SMG for example, which is absolutely top tier. Was nerfed somewhat recently, but still it's pretty top tier. However, unlike the Recluse, and another huge benefit of The Last Hope and why it's so desirable is the accuracy and stability. It's very, very easy to put accurate shots on a target. It has absurd starting stability, like almost maxed out starting stability. Like it's truly mind boggling how easy to use this particular archetype is. It's insane and that matters a lot on console. Like the recluse is god tier on PC because you can snipe enemies from literally across the map. Like it's a laser beam, it's ridiculous. But if you use that weapon on console, it's good still, but it really feels like more of a close range SMG. You are not dealing with enemies at the same range that you are on PC. But on console even, this weapon is still so stable, so easy to use. The better target acquisition helps there as well. So. It's one of the honestly not too many guns out there that transitions the platform and is good no matter where you get it. It also definitely doesn't hurt that you can get some pretty decent PvP rolls for this weapon as well. Sidearms are not a bad choice in PvP and with the nerfs to shotguns coming with Season of the Worthy in only a few days, if shotguns aren't as good anymore, the next best close range option would be sidearms. A lot of people are looking to get some great PvP sidearm rolls and hedge their bets for if that scenario plays out. So having an adaptive frame sidearm, like those are very good in PvP even to this day. And yeah, like you can get a PvE roll of Feeding Frenzy and Multi-Kill Clip. Guess what? That's still gonna be pretty decent in PvP too. You may wanna go for something like Tap the Trigger for just insane accuracy or like Range Finder to really extend the damage ranges as much as possible, but this is just overall a super desirable weapon.
And so you have a hard choice to make. You can either try to get this weapon now, which would probably just involve either if you have Fractaline laying around using that and simply leveling up stuff as much as possible, or potentially just going to the Cryptarch and buying legendary engrams. The thing is, you have a better chance of getting this absolute god tier weapon now than you do with Season of the Worthy because they're adding a bunch of old school faction rally weapons and armor into the world drop loot pool. So those engrams are going to be even more diluted next season. But of course, there's also the scenario of... Don't you want to get a crack at the new weapons next season in the world drop loot pool so you want to save your legendaries? So this weapon is going to get harder to get, but there's other new weapons that could also be very good. It's quite the conundrum, and uh, I'll let you guys figure that one out for yourselves. Also, tell me about how you got your god roll first try. I can't wait to read a bunch of those. Guys, that's it for the video. I hope you enjoyed, found this informative, and if you did, please remember to help me out by simply rating and especially sharing this video. If you guys want to see more Destiny any two content similar to this, don't be afraid to slap that subscribe button. If you want to get in touch with me and keep up to date with the latest channel activity, the best way is to follow me on Twitter at Rick Kakis. That's linked in the description down below. Again, I hope you enjoyed the video, and as always, have a good day.